Let's place the current sheet in the XY plane with the current flowing in the Y direction with an amplitude of K sub Y amps per meter. We can visualize this current sheet as a series of wires that we lay side by side like this. and so forth. So now let's think in terms of looking at the edge of our current sheet. And so if we're looking at the edge, then the current is flowing into the page into the A sub Y direction like this. Let's focus on one of these current elements, this one right here. We know the form of the magnetic field intensity due to an infinite line of current. If you put the thumb of your right hand in the direction of the current, your right fingers will point in the direction of these circles of magnetic field intensity around this current filament. And we know that the magnitude of these magnetic field intensity lines is given by I over 2 pi times D, where D is the distance from the current filament to the magnetic field intensity line. We are now going to look at two current elements that are equal distance from the origin, say this one and this one. So here's our two selected wires an equal distance away from the origin. And let's look at the magnetic field intensity at this point on the z-axis due to these two currents. So for this current here it would be this magnetic field intensity and for this current here it would be this magnetic field intensity. So looking at this point on the z-axis, the magnetic field intensity due to this current filament will be tangent to the circle, so this arrow will give its direction, and the length of the arrow will be the amplitude. And for this current filament, the magnetic field intensity will be represented by this tangent arrow, and again, the length of this arrow will be the magnitude of the magnetic field intensities. And so because the magnitudes are the same from the geometry, we can see that the result will be a magnetic field intensity just in the A sub X direction. Now, we can then use superposition and think about the magnetic field intensities due to this pair, then to this pair, then to this pair, and for each pair, we know the field is only in the A sub X direction. And when we add them up, going from zero to infinity, we see the result is that we can only have a magnetic field intensity in the X direction. So the magnetic field intensity at that point will have some form of an amplitude in the A sub X direction. And this will be true at any point in space for Z greater than zero because of the fact that this sheet is infinite in extent. Okay, now we can do the same thing below the plane, that is for z less than zero. So looking here we see that the magnetic field intensity due to the current filament on the right would look like this, due to the current filament on the left would look like this, and the summation would be this. So for an equal distance below, we see that the magnetic field intensity at this point will have the same amplitude, h sub x, but it will now be in the minus a sub x direction. So now we're going to apply Ampere's circuit law that the integral of h dot dl around a closed path is equal to the 
current enclosed to determine the magnetic field intensity due to our infinite uh, sheet of current. So let's take a path like this where this top and bottom segment are parallel to our sheet of current and the two sides are perpendicular. And let this point be minus L and this point be plus L. So along the top segment we know that the magnetic field intensity is constant and it's in the A sub X direction and that's also true for this bottom segment it's constant and in the minus A sub X direction and it will have the same amplitude because we will be equal distance this line segment is the same distance below our current sheet so this line segment here is the same distance below our current sheet as this line segment is above the current sheet okay so let's find the integral of h dot dl okay so we'll start let's go along this surface here so h is in the direction of our integration so the integral of h dot dl from this point to this point will just be h sub x times 2l our path length okay as we integrate from here to here we know along this segment h is in the a sub x direction but d sub l is in the a sub z direction so that dot product is zero so the integral of h dot dl from here to here is zero now the integral from h dot dl from here to here we have h in the same direction as our integration so that integral also will be h sub x times 2l and finally when we close our path going from this point to this point our integration is in the our dl is in the a sub z direction but our magnetic field intensity is in the a sub x direction so that dot product is zero now this is going to equal the current enclosed and that's the current going through this surface right here so with your right hand in the direction of the integration your thumb points into the page so that's the direction of the current so the current going into the page is the current density along here which is k sub y times this total distance which is 2L so we have 4L HX equals K sub Y times 2L so H sub X is equal to K sub Y over 2 so looking back here notice that it would not have mattered if we had taken say a path that was like this as far as the result of the integration we would have still obtained h sub x is equal to ky over 2 so in other words the value of the magnetic field intensity is independent of how far away we are from our plane of current so here is our final result that when z is greater than zero the magnetic field intensity is the value of that sheet current density in the y direction over two and the direction is in the a sub x direction and when we're below the uh, sheet of current the magnetic field intensity has amplitude k sub y over two but now it's in the minus a sub x direction